Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition's top stories. Members of the public urged to follow the newly instituted protocols. Stakeholder consultations on COVID-19 vaccination soon to commence. And teachers attached to the St. Lucia Blind Welfare Association receive e-book devices. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney during an update to the nation on Wednesday called on members of the public to play their part in the fight against COVID-19. The Prime Minister highlighted the importance of finding balance and coexisting with the virus. Honorable Chastney stated that this is the first time any government has had to deal with the coronavirus. However, he assured that the government of St. Lucia is doing all in its power to keep the country safe. As the evidence comes to us from the command center. Cabinet sits and makes these very difficult decisions. There is no print, there's no previous track record as to how to make this work. We constantly want to find that balance. And we understand if we don't control the spread of COVID and it's allowed to spread throughout our society, the pain will be intolerable because it means income will be lost, livelihoods will be lost, and sadly, lives will also be lost. St. Lucia recorded a spike in COVID-19 cases in January, which was attributed to increased activity during the holiday season and the lack of adherence to protocols. The Prime Minister urged members of the public to adhere to the protocols and take responsibility for their actions as it affects the entire population. Go to work, go home. It's what we've been saying. Sadly, the messaging has not been working. We would have hoped that when persons saw the numbers increasing, that they would have. I mean, education. Why are we, we should be outraged, mm -hmm. outraged as a, as a public that the behavior that we've had was so irresponsible during the Christmas and New Year's that it's affected kids going back to school. How is it that they don't matter? Why are we not getting mad at ourselves? And that's why I say, let's treat this as a report card. And we have a, a feeling great at this point. We have no one else to blame but ourselves. Taiwan and some other countries around the world have shown you can have school, you can go to business, you can do all the things that you want to do. Follow the protocols. Follow the protocols. That's all we have to do. We control our own desk and we can have it all. We can go to school, we can be partying, we can do all the things we want to do. Follow the protocols. Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Alan Chastney. Deputy Commissioner of Police Milton Daisy noted an alarming disregard for the COVID-19 protocols during police operations. Noting the critical nature of the situation, the DCP urged members of the public to adhere to the newly instituted protocols as the Royal St. Lucia Police Force will be doing its part to ensure enforcement. We are urging persons to please comply, be responsible, ask, um, encourage others to adhere to the protocols um, because law enforcement will be there and um, where protocols are not followed, I, I think it is reasonable enough to think or to understand that we need to be serious and take action. Um, we have had the um, COVID wardens, we have had officers going out there to, pe to persons warning them and so on, but I think the time has come that we are to take definite action against persons who do not comply with the protocol. I'm urging members of the public, if you do follow the protocols, and um, I am sure CMO would see a reduce in the numbers and that we could go back to um, normalcy or bring back some of the activities that we are cutting down. The DCP explained that many times during the holiday season, police intervention was necessary to stop public activities that blatantly disregarded the protocols. Daisy called for an immediate end to this kind of behavior. With social activities, this, um, that is one area that we had to look at and um, I must say um, law enforcement we were actually putting pressure to have it curtailed 
because um, we realize that persons do not, especially at the bars, persons come, they do not um, wear their mask, they do not use the sanitizers, they do not use um, the physical distances, um, distancing that is necessary, and as a result, we see what happens. Um, I must say, having said this, it's not that this was the only reason, because um, CMO have indicated other reasons that may have contributed, but we, we saw that this was one of the areas, especially persons having a party with 100, 100 persons, being in a pool, so many persons, so um, it made it easy for transmission. So we are asking persons to please take heed of the new measures in place. Deputy Commissioner of Police, Milton Daisy. The Department of Health and Wellness is preparing for the receipt of vaccinations in short order. Chief Medical Officer in the Department of Health and Wellness, Dr. Sharon Belmar George, during an update to the nation on Wednesday, explained that the department is working with the World Health Organization and has signed on to the COVAX facility for the advanced market commitment. Their timeline is that we'll have it available by the end of March. And we were really hoping that although there were delays with WHO approving the, the vaccine that we were working with, we are hoping that we don't get delays in terms of the distribution into countries. And at the end of March, we'll receive enough vaccine to cover um, two doses for 20% of our population. And we have worked out the strategy to allow us to be able to ensure that those that are of higher risk, that is our um, frontliners, and also persons with um, chronic and underlying health conditions would be the first to receive that vaccine. And it is in, a, in, in two doses. Um, and, and also to note, the vaccine is for persons 16 years and older. The Department of Health and Wellness will be providing more information on the COVID-19 vaccination in due time. Stakeholder consultations are expected to commence in the week of the 25th to the 29th January 2021. Meantime, Director of the Pan-American Health Organization, PAHO, Dr. Carissa Etienne, indicated that while some countries in the region have commenced the COVID-19 vaccination process, the availability of vaccines, especially in the early days, would be limited. She explained, however, that the establishment of the COVAX facility will ensure the equitable distribution of vaccines in the region, but while countries are with the vaccines, appropriate measures must be taken to prevent the spread of the virus. I think that the next two years are going to be critical as vaccination of a majority of the population will not happen overnight. And I think we have to manage those expectations. If there are not enough vaccines to stop the transmission, then the, our initial strategy must be to use those vaccines to save lives by prioritizing those at higher risk. And this is precisely why the COVAX facility was created by WHO and its partners. And, and the COVAX is working to ensure that countries have equal access to safe and efficacious COVID-19 vaccines. And that it doesn't take them a whole year or more to be able to access vaccines. So COVAX is going to offer vaccines uh, access to a basket of some 15 vaccines. Um, and we believe that distribution will begin by the end of March, and it will target at least 20% of the population with a focus on vulnerable groups. Dr. Etienne remains optimistic that the situation will change once the vaccines become available to the region. Countries, however, must prepare for the vaccination process. The situation should also improve once more vaccines are approved by national regulatory authorities. And, and these include vaccines that have already completed phase three and are in clinical trials. Today, we have a pipeline of more than 190 vaccine candidates. Uh, we're not sure that all of them are going to, um, to be approved, but it, it is encouraging to see that so many vaccines are in development. So working as quickly as possible, scientists from across the world are collaborating and innovating to bring us tests and treatments, but also um, vaccines. So we are hopeful. We need to plan very well. Um, we need to use this interim period to make sure that every country is ready. And we need to begin uh, 
the prioritization process because we won't have all the vaccines that we need immediately, but we, um, from March, we should begin to receive some vaccines. Director of PAHO, Dr. Carissa Etienne. As part of newly instituted protocols to aid in preventing the spread of COVID-19, all schools are to be closed operating exclusively via multimedia platforms from the 22nd of January 2021 for the period of 10 days. Chief Education Officer in the Department of Education, Innovation and General Relations, Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer, highlighted that the fight against the coronavirus is a collaborative one. As such, she asserted that everyone must play their part. We embrace the fact that educational institutions can be part and can support this initiative as it is for the well-being of everybody in St. Lucia. And so we continue likewise to speak to what can we do to make the situation better. We want to be part of the solution and not part of the problem or the issue. As responsible stakeholders in education, we embrace this in a significant manner. For us, the message remains the same. Personal and collective responsibility of educators and everybody within our system. The Chief Education Officer added that the Department of Education will continue playing its role as the country combats the virus. We support the Department of Education, we support the national initiative to bring this under control, and we encourage everyone to model the correct behaviors, the protocols that are going to help us get through this, while at the same time educating our young ones because they too can do the same. As a department, we remain vigilant as well as responsible in our interactions with everybody as we want to wish the nation well and pledge our continued support to ensure that we bring this situation under control. Chief Education Officer Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer. This is NTN Nightly. Stay with us when we come back. The Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations comes to the aid of the St. Lucia Blind Welfare Association. In an effort to ensure patient and first responder safety, the St. Lucia Fire Service has reviewed its patient transfer procedures, especially for patients with respiratory distress. Face masks will be provided. At no time during transportation should the face mask be removed. Please be patient and cooperative during this time to ensure you receive the best possible care while keeping our first responders safe. Welcome back. Teachers attached to the St. Lucia Blind Welfare Association receive e-book devices from the Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations. Hamadi Mark tells us more. This donation comes on the heels of the provision by the Department of Education for the special education subsector, which so far includes 130 electronic tablets for students and 30 laptops for special education teachers from seven special education centers to the tune of EC $154,000. The e-book devices handed over to teachers who provide for the blind and visually impaired students come with assistive technologies such as zooming text and text-to-speech. Accompanying Dr. Rigabat at the short presentation ceremony was Mr. Jameen Anthony, Curriculum Specialist for Technology and Integration, who explained the rationale behind the handover of these devices. It is important from the perspective of um, those of us who are in education, that education is a right and it is something that must be made accessible to everybody in spite of the economic background, their differences, their capabilities. And so for me it's about equity and I'm very, very pleased that I'm able to participate in this little activity this morning where we are handing over some um, e-book devices to the instructors, the instructional support, um, support people in the education services unit so that they will be able to better serve um, our special education needs learners, our, those who are visually um, impaired to be specific. 
Mr. Raymond Thompson, coordinator of the Education Services for Blind and Visually Impaired Students, spoke at the importance of these devices. The Ministry of Education is once again presenting us with some equipment, some e-devices that are necessary in the teaching and, and learning of students. And these devices will, will, will give you the opportunity to better uh, able, you will be better able to assist the students, students who are blind and visually impaired in the program. And so today for me, it's a joyous moment. I just, I, I feel a sense of gratitude, heartfelt gratitude, and I want to express sincere thank you. Mr. Anthony Avril, Executive Director of the St. Lucia Blind Welfare Association, also expressed gratitude for the devices. Let me join my colleague, the Coordinator of Education Services for Blind VI students in St. Lucia for to express our sincere appreciation. The St. Lucia Blind Welfare Association believes and practice inclusive services, and by that we mean that every country must ensure that adequate provision is made to provide a level playing field for the people who are living with blindness, vision impairment, and other forms of disabilities. Before handing over the devices, Minister for Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, Honorable Dr. Gail Rigabat voiced her appreciation for the dedicated work of the St. Lucia Blind Welfare Association in providing support to hundreds of citizens who live with visual impairment. She went on to underscore the value of inclusiveness as well as the core beliefs of the Department of Education. When the we reach out to others understanding fully the spirit of inclusiveness that we can make a tremendous change in the lives of others. What I'm doing here is a continuity of what I've always done as a student, as a lecturer, now as a politician, as a minister. It is to help to transform lives. The hashtag Educate St. Lucia mantra is an inclusive one. This is why the presentation this morning is so important to me personally. It speaks to one of the core and fundamental beliefs of my ministry that no child should be left behind, particularly in this digital and technological age. Dr. Rigobert went on to say that it was her hope that these new ebook devices will serve the Education Services Unit well in complementing this very unique type of assistance that they have been making to the special education needs learners. From the Government Information Service, Huma Mark reporting. The Ministry of Health and Wellness informs the general public that for persons traveling outside of St. Lucia and requiring a COVID-19 PCR test can access those services at the Grosile Polyclinic or the Viewfort Wellness Center. Swabbing for the COVID-19 PCR test will only be available at the two centers on Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. The cost of the COVID-19 PCR test is US $100 or EC $267 to be paid at the Grosile Polyclinic of Viewfort Wellness Center. Please be advised that effective Monday, January 25, 2021, the Respiratory Hospital, Victoria Hospital, will only administer the COVID-19 PCR test for persons who will be undertaking elective surgery and require a test. This test will also cost US $100 or EC $267. Persons are also advised to work with a valid form of identification when accessing services at the Grosile Polyclinic, Viewfort Wellness Center, and the Victoria Hospital. It is recommended that persons come in at least three days before scheduled travel or elective surgery date. All persons coming to conduct business at the Grosile Polyclinic, Viewfort Wellness Center, or the Victoria Hospital must wear a mask before entering the facilities. All hands will be sanitized with an alcohol-based solution. 
The Ministry of Health will continue to take the necessary measures to ensure the health and safety of all staff and patients during the COVID-19 pandemic. In response to the need to lessen the current spread of COVID-19 and protect the health of the public, tenants and vendors, the authorities have agreed to introduce the following actions effective Friday, January 22 until Monday, February 1, 2021. No produce vending will be allowed outside the market. In order to facilitate social distancing protocols, a system of market vendor rotation will be enforced at the Castries Provisions Market. Farmers vending from their vehicles will be accommodated at the old fire station site. Social distancing and sanitizing protocols will be enforced. Suspension of a Saturday flea market until further notice. No vending of produce will be allowed on Sundays on Jeremy Street. These measures are necessary to ensure the safety of all as we remain committed in supporting the call from the authorities for persons to exercise social distancing. The Castry City Council would do all that is possible to assist vendors maintain their livelihood within the constraints of this COVID-19 spread. For more information, please call the Ministry of Health at 468-5309. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.